What is up, YouTube? Back in the garage, per usual. Next day, here's where we're at. Wheels polished up for the iron head. Gaskets and rings are here for the CB350. We are doing a full rebuild on that, not the motor. I'm leaving the bottom end alone. But we did just yank the entire frame apart. So at the end of this video, you get to watch the uh, time lapse of complete Honda CB350F frame teardown. Hopefully you enjoy that. If those are super boring, let me know below and I'll get rid of those and walk you through every single boring detail of taking nuts and bolts apart. On the upside, this 18 high shoulder wheel, I ordered a tire yesterday, it showed up today. I can't believe how fast that got here. I also realized <laughs> in my stupor, it's been a while since I've worked on iron heads, so cut me a little bit of slack there. The bearings that I thought would work were for a dual flange hub, completely different design. I forgot that on these old ones, they had the sealed bearing cages, and there's three of them, two on your hub side, one here. And then you get your thread in piece as your retainer on the outer side. So new bearings are ordered. Other miscellaneous parts to get the wheel stuff done on the new chopper are ordered. I'm kind of scrambling. I'm trying to commit to a bike show with a brand new bike in March. It is mid end of January. So I'm really not giving myself a lot of time. <clears throat> I do not have a ton of parts left for the motor either. And then the next couple days we'll most likely get, be getting this Honda motor back together. Reassemble the head, reassemble the cylinders, set the timing on the cam chain, get that all dialed. And then I got to scramble on the Honda before I can start on the Harley stuff. And then that Evo's got to come back home relatively quick here. I don't know what's going to come first. I'm waiting on parts. I'm waiting on machining stuff. I got one of the cases back for the iron head build. Hopefully that's enough to get me rolling. All the internal parts are ordered for that as well. It's just a matter of when things show up, when I get parts back and then full sprint. As of right now, the fire bike is on hold, not the motor, but the actual bike itself, because odds are this motor, the new motor I've been building is gonna go right into this chopper frame, get that done and ready to go. Runner, rider, it might get trailered to shows, not by choice, but we also have the van and any of the shows are much easier to set up and vend and do the powder coating advertising with the van and a bike on a trailer as opposed to both me and her trying to do both of them together. Either way, this is the Honda video, so enjoy. Pistons cleaned up, hit them with the wire wheel, knocked all the carbon off. I don't think we're gonna do the micro coating on this because now we're kind of at a time constraint. It's mid-January. Riding season here could start in March or April or May or June. Who knows? Gotta love the Midwest. Pistons are cleaned up on the top side. Uh, wrist pins and clips are still installed on these, so I'm gonna have to take these apart again when I put it back together. All I got left on cleanup is the ring lands. Some of these don't look that bad. Others are really dirty in there, which is fine because got a two broken rings that we can use for scraping out the carbon on those. Here's a broken piston ring that I snapped off of this. Like I said, I knew I was buying new ones, so I wasn't the most careful about taking these out. Uh, on the table, I do have a set of ring expanders. That's not gonna work on tiny little baby Honda pistons. So what you're gonna do with your broken ring, don't throw them out right away, because they're snapped. You don't need that many of them, but Obviously, this is the ring that went in here. None of these were stuck. Everything was in pretty good shape. But now I got a nice sharp edge on both edges of these rings. I'm going to pass this around each one of the ring lands to scrape up all of the carbon in these pistons. That'll give me a nice, perfect little piece. You can go both ways if you really want to. I like pushing them personally, but this will also work. So we go through run this around the lands a couple times. You can see all this carbon crap that's coming off of my pinky right there. Grab a towel so you can clean off your tool. I have a ring cutter too. I always use piston rings though. I think it cuts a little bit better than the ring land cutter tool in all honesty. And it's free. If you have a motor that's been locked up or overheated or scored or any of these are rolled over and the piston rings don't float free in this, you got bigger problems.
If you noticed, I did not do the lower oil ring. I don't have to. They're really, really clean. Overall, this motor is in substantially better shape than I anticipated. But there we go. All four pistons are done. And that's all I got for tonight. Unfortunately, I'm waiting on parts. I'm waiting on tools. I can't move any farther forward. Might turn this into a video. It might get separated into two separate ones. Harley wheel plus Honda stuff. Or maybe I'll break all the rules and mix some Honda stuff together. Hondas and Harleys in one video. That's blasphemy. If you don't like the Honda stuff, I apologize. If you don't like the Harley stuff, I also apologize. I don't really care. I'm not a purist. I like working on bikes. All of these are enjoyable to me to some extent. I like diagnosing and figuring out what the problems are. Motor's a motor's a motor. Yes, you can approach it differently. It is what it is. I don't care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.